Nowadays, we're accustomed to seeing corporations buy media companies to boost their streaming services and other departments with libraries and properties. However, long before Disney acquired 20th Century Fox and MGM became a part of Amazon, someone who saw a lot of value in purchasing film and television libraries in order to strengthen his assets was Ted Turner. Through the 80s and 90s, he bought several companies and accumulated a massive amount of movies and television series, transforming Turner Entertainment into quite an impressive powerhouse. Ted Turner started gaining his wealth initially through his father's billboard business, and then eventually radio and television stations he acquired. It was during his time running those UHF stations that he noticed the importance of airing classic movies and shows. He then founded the TBS Superstation, which broadcast to homes via satellite and found success by broadcasting reruns and sports games. One ambitious idea Turner had was to create a 24-hour news channel, which eventually became CNN. Following the success of TBS and CNN, Ted Turner set his sights on buying MGM. The legendary studio had merged with United Artists in 1981, and this is important. United Artists owned the rights to not only their own productions, but also the Archeo Radio Pictures Library and the Associate Artist Productions Library. In the 1950s, Warner Brothers sold most of their pre-1950 movies to AAP, including the pre-1948 Color Looney Tunes cartoons. Paramount had also sold them the Popeye cartoons. Believe it or not, there was a time when big movie studios thought there was not much monetary advantage to keeping that back catalog, which is crazy to think about now. Ted Turner eventually bought MGM in 1986 for $1.5 billion. Even though Turner was forced to sell the company back to then-owner Kirk Kikorian only a few months later, he kept the MGM, RKO, and AAP libraries. This was a smart business move on his part, as Turner Entertainment now had access to several classics, including the rights to renowned films like Casablanca, The Wizard of Oz, Citizen Kane, 2001 A Space Odyssey, King Kong, Singing in the Rain, The Maltese Falcon, The Tom and Jerry cartoons, and Ted Turner's favorite movie, Gone with the Wind. As a result, he started the TNT Network to air many of these movies and series. Turner did have one idea of what to do with his library that did not go over so well. He announced an interest in colorizing black and white movies, a plan that got a lot of heat from filmmakers and critics. The news that Turner was planning to colorize Citizen Kane especially attracted controversy. Eventually, he abandoned that whole experiment. One part of the entertainment business that Turner saw a lot of demand for was animation. Having already acquired several of the Warner Brothers, MGM, and Popeye cartoons, he decided to add Hanna-Barbera to his list of animation properties, along with most of the Ruby Spears library. Ted Turner even created his own animated show, Captain Planet and the Planeteers, based on his interest in environmental protection. With all this animation under his belt, Turner launched Cartoon Network in 1992 as a place to air the several cartoons he owned, with Hanna-Barbera eventually creating series exclusively for the channel. His company also started producing animated features, starting with Tom and Jerry the Movie and Hanna-Barbera's Once Upon a Forest. Turner Animation was eventually founded, with the hybrid film The Page Master being the first production. During the 90s, his company also bought New Line Cinema, the home of The Nightmare on Elm Street, and Rob Reiner's production company, Cast Rock Entertainment. In 1994, yet another channel was created, titled Turner Classic Movies. The purpose of this new channel was to broadcast the classic MGM Archeo and Warner Brothers movies he owned, and in a move appreciated by cinephiles everywhere, the films are run, uncut, commercial-free, and in the correct aspect ratio. Certainly a far cry from his colorization days. With several channels airing Turner-owned movies, some of these broadcasts helped certain films gain a wider audience. Bob Clark's A Christmas Story did decently enough in its original release. After Turner acquired the film from MGM, it aired constantly on his stations every year, eventually resulting in the famous 24-hour marathons on TNT and TBS, and becoming a family favorite. The Shawshank Redemption is another example. Despite critical acclaim and Oscar nominations, it did not set the box office on fire. However, the film saw frequent rotation on Turner channels, which led to its current status as one of the most cherished movies of the last 30 years. Ted Turner was not just interested in acquisitions, though. He had ambitions of having his own film production company, which led to the creation of Turner Pictures. A movie he felt particularly passionate about was Gettysburg, an over four-hour-long drama about the titular battle during the American Civil War. It was originally planned as a television miniseries, but Turner was so impressed with what he saw, he bumped it to a theatrical release. While not a box office success, the movie did get strong home video sales and television ratings. 
In 1995, Turner Pictures announced a massive slate of films in development. Many of these weren't made, including a live-action Johnny Quest movie, a live-action Jetsons movie to be directed by Chuck Russell, a Jackie Robinson biopic directed by Spike Lee and starring Denzel Washington, and Oliver Stone's adaptation of The Fountainhead. However, some did eventually reach screens, like You've Got Mail, City of Angels, Practical Magic, Almost Heroes, and the live-action Scooby-Doo movie. These films were all released by Warner Brothers after Turner agreed to sell his company to Time Warner in 1996, thus bringing the classic WB films and cartoons back under their roof, along with Cartoon Network, TBS, TCM, CNN, Hanna-Barbera, New Line, Castle Rock, the classic MGM, and RKO libraries, and everything else in the Turner Entertainment family. This also included Turn Animation's last production, Cat Stone Dance, which Warner Brothers unfortunately released with little fanfare, which is perplexing when you consider the possible corporate synergy. Here's a film about the golden age of Hollywood with references to movies WB now owns and is re-releasing on video. They also now have a channel dedicated to animation and another to classic movies. They could have used Cat Stone Dance to heavily promote all of these, including this charming new animated film they've acquired. I think they really dropped the ball there. There was some concern within these Turner-owned companies about whether Time Warner would feel the need to keep their doors open. New Line was particularly worried, as they wondered whether their studio would be considered redundant next to Warner Brothers. Impressively, New Line remained largely independent from their sister studio, helped by big hits like The Rush Hour and Austin Powers franchises, and a little trilogy called The Lord of the Rings. It took the underwhelming box office performance of New Line's The Golden Compass for the company to eventually be absorbed into WB in 2008. As for Turn Animation, most of its staff was transferred over to Warner Brothers Feature Animation, and Hanna-Barbera became a part of Warner Brothers' television animation unit, with new animated projects based on Scooby-Doo and the other properties released under that banner. As for Ted Turner, he became the vice chairman of Time Warner, and was initial supporter of the infamous merger with AOL. He stepped down from the position in 2003, and then left the company entirely in 2006. The Turner brand is not used as often nowadays, with the likes of Cartoon Network and TBS officially being considered Warner Media Companies. And yet, to this day, Warner still takes advantage of their acquisitions from the Turner Entertainment merger. If you were constantly looking in the background while watching Space Jam New Legacy, I'd estimate at least 50% of those characters you spotted are there because of Ted Turner. See you next time.